Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn additional analysis techniques. The course objectives, additional analysis techniques, module objectives. We'll learn how to describe the concept of a linearity and equivalence, analyze electrical surface using the principle of a superposition, calculate a semi equivalent circuit for a linear circuit, calculate a Norton equivalent for a linear circuit. Some equivalent circuits we have used explicitly or inexplicitly. For example, resistor network, we know how to combine two resistors R1 and R2 in series, and I will also learn how to combine two resistors in parallel. The voltage sources, if we have two voltage sources in series, and that is equivalent to a voltage source that has a voltage of a the linear algebraic summation of the two. For current sources, if we have two current sources in parallel, the equivalent current source that is equal to the algebraic summation of the two. Power supply equivalence. So the two power supply will be equivalent if they will provide the same effect in a circuit. For example, if we take off the load, we open this circuit. If we use a multimeter to measure the voltage between these two nodes, and we call it an open circuit voltage, it should be the same as this open circuit voltage VOC. If we measure the short circuit current, say we are going to connect these two nodes, and we measure the current, we call it a short circuit current, which would be equal to the short circuit current over here. If both of these two requirements are met, we say these two power supplies are equivalent. Linearity. Mathematically, linearity implies that they satisfy the principle of a superposition. For a model y that is equal to t of a function of u, we say this is linear if and only if the linear combination of the input rather result in the same linear combination of the two outputs. Here, if we supply the system with the input u1, and the output will be t u1. Similarly, if, if we provide an input u2, it will result in the output of a t as a function of u2. Here, the input becomes a linear combination of u1 and u2, alpha1 times u1 plus alpha2 times u2. So it will result in the same linear combination, alpha1 times t u1 plus alpha2 times t u2. And this should be valid for all possible input pairs, u1 and u2, and all possible scalars, alpha1 and alpha2. Superposition principle can be split into two requirements. The first requirement is called additivity. So it says the summation of a two input will result in the summation of the two outputs. And the second part is called a homogeneity. The homogeneity says the scaled input should result in the same scaled output. Here t, that is a function of u. You might be wondering, what are the linear circuits? Circuits without nonlinear elements will be called as linear circuits. In this topic, we will use linearity assumption to develop a special analysis techniques. Solve problems using homogeneity. So here we have one example. To find a V out over here. From the chapter two, we learned how to solve V out by using resistor network simplification. In chapter three, we learned how to use a nodal and a loop analysis to find a V out. And a homogeneity since the circuit is linear, we know that given the power supply Vs, it will result in output V out. Given another power supply Vs prime, assume that it's a k times of Vs, you should see the same scaled output. V out prime should be equal to k times V output. And over here, if we assume that V prime output is equal to 1 volt, we can calculate Vs prime. Once Vs prime is calculated, we know that V out over Vs should be equal to the same ratio of V out prime over Vs, which tells us V out that is equal to Vs over Vs prime times V out prime. And over here, V out prime that is equal to 1 volt. So that is something we assumed here over here. It tells us that to use homogeneity to perform such analysis, the first step is to give V naught an arbitrary value, say 1 volt, 
The second step is to computing the resulting source value, and let's call it a VS prime. And step three, we use a linearity or homogeneity, VO over VS, that is equal to the new output of VO prime, which is something we are assumed over the calculated parts by VS prime. Step four, we can calculate VO, VO that is equal to VO prime over VS prime times VS. Let's work the problem out. This is a nice little tool for special problems, normally when there is only one source, and in our judgment, solving the problem backwards is actually easier. Let's see how we solve this problem. So step one, give v naught an arbitrary value. Over here, we will assume that v naught prime that is equal to one volt. In the second step, we're gonna compute the resulting source value of vs prime. So vs prime is over here. By giving v naught prime, we can find a V1 prime. V1 prime, which is a voltage between here and here. We can find that by using um, the voltage division. So this is the voltage division circuit. So V1 prime, that is equal to four plus two divided by two times VO prime, that is equal to three volts. And further, we can use the same idea to find a VS prime. So we find a VS prime that is equal to six volts in this case. And step three, it's, we're going to use a linearity or homogeneity property. So we say V over V S that is equal to V O prime over V S prime. And we plug the value in, so we know that V S is equal to 12 volts, and V S prime is something we find that is uh, 6 volts. And V O prime, that is something we assumed which is equal to 1 volt. And step 4, we can solve for V O, which gives us a 2 volts. Source the superposition. This technique is a direct application of a linearity. It is normally useful when circuits has uh, only a few sources. For example, in this problem we have two power supplies. One is Vs and the other one is Is. By using linearity, we know that the output of Vl is equal to the summation of the two parts. One part is caused by the power supply Vs and the other part is caused by another power supply Is. The first part of Vl that can be computed by setting the current source to be zero and solving the circuit. And similarly for the second part of VL, because it's resulted from the current source, we will assume the power supply to be zero. Let's look at one example to find a current I1. Current I1 is over here. And in this problem, we have two power supplies, V1 and V2. We know that I1 is resulted from two power supplies, V1 and V2. We can use source superposition by decomposing one circuit to be two parts. And one part is uh, driven by the voltage source V1, and the other part is driven by voltage source V2. So in the first circuit, we will let the second power supply V2 to be zero. So we're going to remove V2 and replace it by a wire so that uh, the voltage between the two nodes will be zero. Similarly, for the second circuit, to let V1 to be zero, we need to replace V1 by a wire so that the voltage between these two nodes will be zero. That is something we need to pay attention. Then the next step to solve I1 prime, and from the first circuit to solve I1 prime, that is not that a challenge. So overall current that is equal to voltage source divided by the overall resistance of the network. So in the network, we have a three in series with a six and a three in parallel. And in the second circuit, I1 double prime, that is a part of this I2 double prime. Over here, we have a 3K and a 3K in parallel. So I1 double prime, that is equal to half I2 double prime. And I2 can be calculated using the similar way as how we did for I1 prime, which is equal to V2 over the total resistance of the network, 6 plus 3 and 3 in parallel. Pay attention to that there is a negative sign over here because I2 double prime doesn't follow the passive sign convention as what we have over here. Afterward, we can calculate I1, that is equal to summation of I1 prime and I1 double prime. Seven is equivalent theorem. So in seven is equivalent theorem, it says that for any circuit that can be broken into two parts, part A and part B, and this part A can always be simplified as a, a voltage supplier with a resistor in series. And this is called a 70 equivalent circuit for part A. And so this voltage source VTH is called a 
70 equivalent source and RTH is called a 70 equivalent resistance. And we also know that for any power supply of a voltage source with a one resistor, we can find its equivalent of a current source with another resistor in parallel with it. That will lead to Norton's equivalent theorem. Norton equivalent simplify part of the circuit to be a current source in parallel with a, a resistor. And here R in that is called a Norton equivalent source and R in that is called a Norton equivalent resistance. Now we know that for any part of a circuit, part A, we can use a 70 equivalent, come with a one voltage source and a run resistor in series. At the same time, we can find it's a Norton equivalent. Since they are used to simplify the same part of the circuit, we know that these two can be equivalent. To make sure these two are equivalent, we, it requires that the open circuit voltage should be the same. So the open circuit voltage for 70 equivalent, that is VOC, and the open circuit voltage for Norton equivalent, that becomes the current ISC times the resistance by using Ohm's law, which give us VOC that is equal to R times ISC. And at the same time, the resistance of the two power supply should be the same, which tell us that if we set this voltage source to be zero, we replace that be a wire, the overall resistance for this network that become RV. And similarly, get rid of the current source to let the current source to be zero. We measure the resistance from this end. It will give us a resistance of RI. So we know that for these two power supplies, they, have the, they should have the same resistance, which give us, which tell us that RV that is equal to RI that is equal to R. These are the two requirements for the two models to be equivalent. Application. This equivalence can be viewed as a source transformation problem. It shows how to convert a voltage source in series with the resistor into an equivalent current source in parallel with the resistor.